Okay, well, thank you, Missy, and thank you, Peggy, and thank you, Chris. Okay, so there's opera in Bozeman? Really? I've heard a lot of remarkable answers to that question. The opera must be one of Bozeman's best-kept secrets. <laughs> now, I came to Bozeman in 2002 for all the standard reasons, and opera was not on my list. But after I'd been here for a few months, some friends asked me whether I would take a walk-on part in the opera. No singing. I said, you're sure? No singing? And they said, right, no singing. So I said, okay. And I became a soldier in the Egyptian army of the Intermountain Opera Association's production of Aida. <laughs> All I had to do was wear this ridiculous costume and march across the stage in time to the music. That part was hard for me, but no singing. Now, in truth, I'm not a stranger to opera. When we lived in the New York City area, our children were members of the Metropolitan Opera Children's Chorus. So, like a good soccer parent, I took them to their rehearsals and went to all of their performances. And along the way, I acquired a taste for really great opera. So, when I came to Bozeman and saw the Intermountain Opera Association's production of Aida, as shown here, I could appreciate that complexity and the difficulty of putting on good opera. And I realized that we have a first-class opera company right here in Bozeman. So I was seduced. After being a soldier in the Egyptian army in Aida, I became a marine uh, guard in Manol Lescaux. Then I became a peasant in the Mikado. <laughs> and then I played a waiter in La Boheme. And then I took a really courageous or perhaps foolhardy step and became a member of the board of directors of the Opera Association. Now, opera has a long history in Bozeman. This building, which stood at the corner of Maine and Rouse, was the first opera house built in 1890. Like everything in Bozeman, it was complicated. It was not just the opera, it was also the city hall, police station, fire station, library, and jail. <laughs> now, opera got mixed reviews, from classy to tawdry. Its location, a couple of blocks from the red light district, may have contributed to that controversy. In the words of one reviewer, the opera stood on the strengths of pink tights and foul words. But the building was structurally unsound and was torn down in 1966 to make way for a park. But opera in Bozeman did not die. In 1979, a new company was formed thanks to Pablo Elvira, a Bozeman resident and famous opera baritone. Pablo recruited local talent and financial backing, and with the help of contacts in New York, they put on La Traviata. Intermountain Opera was an immediate success. Local, lo, um, local singers and vocalists joined Pablo together with other opera professionals to make opera a permanent institution in Bozeman. Linda Curtis, now our artistic director, was among the first sopranos. So since 1979, Intermountain Opera has put on over 40 operas, ranging from the most comedic and light to the most grand. The productions are always well received by audiences and critics, and hundreds, if not thousands, of volunteers have contributed their time and their resources to make the opera a success. The cast consists of a combination of local talent in the chorus and in the minor parts, and professional guest artists in the major roles. The guests love coming to Bozeman and often go home with real Montana stories such as a recent black bear vehicle encounter on Cottonwood Road. The orchestra consists of 25 to 30 local professionals. The maestro is always a professional in, specialist in conducting opera. The orchestra, although not as visible on stage as the performers, plays a vital role as live music is essential to great opera. The stage crew at the Wilson Auditorium are also key partners. We use a combination of rented sets and costumes together with homemade local creations. Um, the Montana Shakespeare in the Parks has been a great help. Where else could you find a 16th century sword and a fight choreographer in Bozeman? Outreach, uh, education is a key outreach activity. We put on special rehearsals for school groups and 
children learn the art and the craft of opera. We have um, scholarships for MSU vocal students, and they are performers in our productions. Our guest artists go to local schools and put on workshops and master classes. The opera run has become an iconic annual event in Bozeman. Opera singers serenade the runners at the guest stops. The prizes are, of course, tickets to the opera and <laughs> our signature Wagnerian headgear. The race isn't over until the fit lady sings. <laughs> now, our most recent production was the hilarious Gilbert and Sullivan comedy HMS Pinafore, a satire on Victorian Britain with themes that are rel still relevant today. While some of you may think opera is boring with singers that just walk on stage, park, and bark, let me show you an example that will change your minds. My real moment of fame in opera was when I had a speaking role in Deflator Mouse. I was the chief of police, and I came on stage at the end of the second act to break up the big party. I can still remember my lines. In the name of the emperor, you're all under arrest. So see you at the opera. We're doing Man of La Mancha in February in partnership with Montana Shakespeare in the Parks, and we're doing a Puccini double bill in May at the Wilson Auditorium. Give it a try. Take a chance. I guarantee that you'll enjoy the opera. <laughs>